Okay, here we have the final product of the Diels Alder reaction and the nucleophilic acyl substitution. And as you can see, it's um, kind of a mess. Um, we have signals that are definitely non first order here. Um, there are some normal ones like uh, a doublet here. But most of them are not what we would call particularly normal with respect to the chem, what we learned in Chem 21. And there are even some like H and F um, that almost look like shrubbery. And in this spectrum for orientation, the way it works is that these boxes with the blow-ups correspond to something that is lower on the regular spectrum. So we have to figure out how to assign these signals. So to start, I followed the convention by lettering the signals from most upfield to most downfield, or excuse me, most downfield to most upfield. Um, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. This signal here around two, um, there are actually several signals. One of them is, pres is presumed to be, one of them is presumed to be um, combined overlap of the carboxylic acid OH and residual water that may be in the acetone D6 solvent that was used. Um, and so because of exchange that's shifted um, further upfield than it would normally be. This signal here um, is actually the residual D5 in the acetone D6, and so we're going to ignore it. And if you look at all these integrations, you see by and large, they're all about one. So except for the signal for the methyl group, which is just over three, but there's some junk down at the bottom, so we're going to call that about three. And so when we go to assign these signals, it's pretty hard to assign them specifically. So for example, we know that A and B are both the vinyl hydrogens, but we don't know which vinyl hydrogen, because if we look at the structure here, there are two vinyl hydrogens. Same thing with C and D. We know because of the chemical shift being between 4 and 4.5 that those are going to be these hydrogens um, that are on the carbon that's attached to the oxygen of an ester. And they're pretty far downfield as a result, also because of their proximity to the carbon-carbon double bond. But again, we don't know which is which. Well, it turns out that there are many mysteries that we can solve in this spectrum with the use of proton-proton cozy. One of the things that we cannot do is figure out which one of these is which diastereotopic um, hydrogen of the methylene that's next to the oxygen. But the rest of them we can figure out pretty well. So when we look at the cozy spectrum, so this is a two-dimensional NMR, proton, proton, cozy, and it's called two-dimensional NMR because you plot the two spectra on two axes. And again, I've pre-lettered the signals. Um, so we have A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I for the OH, J for the methyl group, and then the same thing here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Okay. And what COSY tells you is which signals or which hydrogens correlate to each other. And in this particular instance, correlation means coupling. Um, and in some cases, you can see not just the uh, one or two, one, excuse me, two or three bond couplings, but also the long range couplings. And so the way that we're going to use this to figure out what we have here, which signal is which, is we're going to start with the one signal that we can non unequivocally or we can unequivocally identify, and that's signal J. 
So signal J here is for this methyl group. So that's the easiest place to start. And so if you look at this signal, which we've now identified as J, um, if we go two bond or three bonds out, one to the H, two, three, will take us to this H. So the signal J should correlate to whichever signal um, corresponds to this proton. So looking at the cozy, I've already highlighted in yellow what I refer to as the self-correlations, right? So those are signals where the uh, signal correlates to itself. So that would be there for signal J. And I've drawn this nice diagonal line. And it turns out that you there are a couple of approaches to this. You can either use the signals above the line, diagonal line, or below the diagonal line. And then what some people like to do is actually make little correlation boxes that use the diagonal line signals and the correlated signals. So we're going to follow signal J down. Let me switch back to the pinkish color. All right, so there's J. There's J, okay. And so you can see that signal J correlates to signal H. And again, we can make this nice little box. So this is showing that J correlates to H. And since the only proton within three bonds of the methyl group is this methine, this therefore must be signal H, right? Now things get a little bit more interesting because if we look at this, let me switch colors, H actually correlates or has a three bond correlation to two different signals. It has a correlation to one of the vinyl hydrogens and it also has a correlation to this hydrogen that's alpha to the carbonyl group. Fortunately, those two signals, the vinylic one in green and the alpha, carb, or alpha hydrogen in blue are going to be different enough that we're going to know which is which. So we're going to go now to signal H. And again, you know, we can start from the top or the bottom. So there's signal H. And you can see that signal H, signal H, has a self-correlation and it also correlates to two signals, one here and then one further down, which I'm not going to write yet. So there's the correlation for one of them. And if we look at the chemical shift, we see that this is correlating to G. So H correlates to G. And that particular signal has to be the alpha hydrogen to the carbonyl because that's the only thing that makes sense. So in other words, um, we're looking at that. So that makes this, if I can blow it up, signal G. Right. Now we can look at the other signal, which would be to the vinyl hydrogens. And you can see, let me move that in a little bit, that H also correlates to this signal down here, right? And that's going to correspond to vinyl hydrogen A. And let's try to do this semi-neatly. So there's kind of the correlation box for that. And again, that's going to be H2A. So this signal is A. And then what you can do is you can just keep going around the ring. Um, and you're going to do some of it clockwise and some of it counterclockwise. So for example,
A is going to correlate to B, which is the other vinyl one. All right, so there's that correlation. And then as you keep going around, there's a hydrogen I forgot to write in here because I always forget something. Right. So let's see if I can finish this before the iPad dies. Um, so hydrogen B is going to then correlate to this hydrogen, and then that's going to correlate to these two hydrogens. And the same thing going around the ring the other way and trying to find a color that I haven't already used, like this brown. Um, this signal is going to correlate to this signal. So if you continue the process that I've done here, you're able to assign all of the hydrogens except for two. And the two hydrogens that you can't tell from each other are these two, which are the diastereotopic hydrogens that are the methylene that's next to the oxygen. And there are other types of spectroscopy um, that can be used to figure out which one is C and which one is D. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about that um, and you're around next year, you might want to sign up for the special topics NMR class with Dr. Anderson, and maybe you can even take that particular spectrum. So your mission is to take this from here and assign all the other hydrogens that I haven't, um, except for C and D. I'm not going to worry about which one is C and which one is D. If somebody asks me about it in discussion, um, somewhere I have the notes that will tell me which is which.